absolutely following their own rules. The judges now are not only practicing law from the bench, the judges are becoming the new prosecutors in the system, wholly against their own rules, totally. The judges are refusing to admit their oath, refusing to produce their oath, and refusing to take a new oath, which means that a judge cannot, as a single judge, as an administrator, cannot administer or take any oaths from anybody in direct contradiction to their laws. It is out of control. Now remember, one of the things we said here, and one of the things we, we've always said, is that we seek to separate the law from the bar so that there is daylight between the two, so that people can see that these people no longer represent. But more importantly, that we constantly teach, support and develop amongst ourselves a degree of competency in the law. Because there will be a time when the bar is held account very soon. And the strongest weapon for criminals and usurpers is when they are faced with competent, honourable, respectful beings. That is the thing they fear the most. Please don't expect that they are going to change anytime soon. If anything, we are seeing their reaction to the dramatic rise in competence has been to become even less concerned in following their own rules. Pretty soon, the pressure on them will be breaking point because I can assure you at the most senior level, they realise that this is unsustainable. You cannot perfect bonds. Those bonds are worthless that they are selling. They're worthless because the, they're not following the rules. Non-consent means that there is no confession. Staying in honour, there is no confession. Not taking their oaths means that the entire process is void. There are so many reasons to argue and clearly argue by their own rules that what they're doing is absolutely without merit and is totally and totally broken. But if you give up now, if you feel that there is no point continuing, if you see what they're doing and, and forget the point that why we're doing this is not to see, well, remedy is what we seek, but if you are facing an oppressor, your ability to stand there, your ability to stand bravely there, competently there, respectfully there, is ultimately the pressure which causes them, in many cases, with sufficient numbers, to be run out of town. And that's the point of dictators. Ultimately, they're cowards. But there is a battle of wills here. And the bars have chosen what they think is a path of least resistance, which is merely to ignore even more of their law. So please don't give up now. Please don't forget this now. I expect to hear more horror stories of them not following their laws. Here is another tool, and there are more tools to come. And Eukadia is not about magic bullets in terms of administrative process. There is no remedy in administrative process. You are the magic bullets. We keep saying this over and over, but you are. And if you miss something in court because the judge says, I'll, I'll carry it over, and you forgot to say... I object, I'm ready to have the matter now, unless you're going to hear the challenge to jurisdiction in 30 days' time, I request that the matter be dismissed. If, if, you, if you keep finding yourself being tricked by these people, don't worry. You weren't trained as a lawyer. You're not supposed to be an expert. They would be horrified that you are able to stand there competently. Don't worry. Just keep learning. Keep dis discussing this. Keep sharing your experiences with others so that the number of competent, honourable people continues to grow exponentially. When you are faced in court, remember, everything about it 
is rooted in ecclesiastical law and everything is rooted in the power of your consent and non-consent and the importance of you maintaining honour. It will get harder, but we will continue in the notes and if you want to look at some of the notes we've done, if you look under ecclesiastical deed polls, there is a new section there where we talk about colour as an example. I know that a number of you questioned over time, why do we use blue? Why do they send things in yellow? If you look at that article, and the article is listed down there, colour in law under ecclesiastical deed, we've run out of time, but if you look at that, it gives you a full history of colours. Colours that the bar have no idea why they do what they do. But your knowledge already in the knowledge of the canons, I'm sure far exceeds most lawyers and your behaviour far exceeds all of these members of the Bar Guild. Please don't give up. Well, I wanted to wrap up with the on-the-ground support and thank you for the number of things we've spoken about tonight. There's been a huge amount. But I just want to talk about on-the-ground support. The fact that, that it costs money to do things, for example, produce IDs or to help people, no one in this model is asking any of you to contribute your time or demanding you contribute your time for nothing. If you are able to support at no cost to help the development of the codes, that's great. If you're able to support others at no cost, that's great. But if you're producing things for people, of course, there is an expectation that you can ask for, reasonably ask for a reasonable price. Over time, as the communities are developed, any official documentation ultimately will be the responsibility of the community. So if someone at the moment is charging a fee or fees for different types of information, documents, then that ultimately will be a temporary situation until the communities are run. Now, if someone is not happy because there might be a high price that someone is charging and that you feel you could do something better, until those communities are formally invested with their charters and running, then I simply suggest that there can be more than one service offered and more than one offering. And if you, you can do it for a cheaper price at the moment, then please, by all means, promote that. But commerce and price ultimately is something that needs to be determined at a community level. And so long as the rules do not allow things to be openly corrupted, I don't feel that anything that's happening at the moment is a tremendous damage at all to the societies. So I know that some may disagree with what I'm saying. Some of you might think that I'm talking a bit vaguely, but I'm merely saying that on-the-ground support is great. I'm grateful and I, I thank all of you who can help. And in some cases, it costs money. So I understand if people are saying I need to charge for identification, that's fine. If you don't help, then nothing will succeed. If you won't help with the codes, then nothing will succeed. So I just hope, please, that, that you continue to increase, you continue to read, you continue to help where you can. And as you can see, with the volume of work that continues to be done, we inch closer and closer to the kind of world that we would love to see. And hopefully you will participate in contributing your effort in the world that you love to see. Thank you for tonight, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank. That's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, the community action is important. Uh, and, and this is another thing, too, is uh, especially also the health code. Uh, it, it's very important. I, I mean, let's face it, even this whole issue with Japan and the radiation that's now looming uh, westward, uh, coming eastward. Um, yeah, it, it, what a better time than to actually start writing a health code. So that's another thing too. Is it, it's very important that uh, those listening to the on the call, if you have experience in uh, in in health matters as as well, get involved. Get involved with the local grassroots community. Uh, be the change you want to see. 
Uh, Frank, uh, we're going to take some questions. Uh, so we're going to ask people to get in the queue for a question and answer. It's uh, star eight. So press star eight for the queue. And uh, Frank, anything in the chat? Um, well, I ask people for questions. Just try and put question in all caps first and then ask your question. That Then I can see them in the chat. Um, otherwise, it's very difficult to see. Here we go. I've got a question here from Befredo for, uh, he says, or she says, um, hi, I'm, I'm in Australia and have realized the banks have acted fraudulently with my mortgage. Will reading the UCC documents be any advantage? The thing about the, well, just quickly, the thing about UCC, the UCC method as a trust, in theory, should provide remedy. The reality is UCC is private law. In other words, they can choose whether they will allow you ultimately to use the law, even if you fully comply under their rules as a trust entity. So the short answer is no. That is why we stopped promoting the concept of UCC because even though in the early days it appears that that potentially can, for example, lodge a legitimate debt, lodge a lien, the reality is that all that would happen at some point is that they simply stop start saying that, that they will not accept trust lodged UCC unless it complies to this particular hoop and loop. And of course, that would then encourage us to keep going through hoops and loops. And then we end up playing the dance that they love us to do, which is keep filling in their forms, keep going back to court, keep dancing to their tune, and I have had enough of dancing to their tune. Uh, if you want answers to how to deal with the foreclosure matter, um, Befredo 4, please have a look at the notes on how to save your home and we'll continue to work on that, okay? Uh, am I familiar with Daryl O'Day, what he's done in Ireland? No, I'm not. So that's something um, I would look forward to you know, hearing from, from you or from others. Um, Brian, have we got anyone who wants to talk? Uh, so far, no. Uh, star 8 again, people, if uh, you want to line up for uh, questions. Thanks. Okay. I've got a question here from Amanda. Uh, many banks hold checks, this is from uh, Amanda, many banks hold checks for no real reason, for example, from a stable place of work, and they often want you to have overdraft protection. Um, is there a procedure for these practical? Um, uh, is there a procedure on checks? The, the short answer, the short answer in, in answering the private banks is that we have banks structure. We have accounts, we have currency, We've been developing interfaces, and very soon all of you who are members will be able to transact with one another and use those accounts. The most powerful tool in dealing with banks, of their banks, is ultimately withdrawing from the system. Is there a remedy in their system? Uh, and how to get them to stop this practice? They're not going to stop, Amanda. This is the point. They're not going to stop the banks will not stop paying themselves bonuses. They will not stop foreclosing. They will not stop funding wars. They will not stop lying. They can't. They've been doing it for, for thousands of years, Amanda. They're not going to stop. I wish they would, but they won't. And if you're dealing with that kind of, of mindset illness, th there's no point spending six months trying to encourage them for a remedy. They're irrelevant in this model. They want to collapse their own currencies, go right ahead. It's irrelevant under our model. We have our own currencies. 